So there's this divide among 2020 Democratic Party presidential contenders when it comes to Fox News. You have people in one camp like Bernie and Tulsi who believe that it is, you know, it, it's reasonable to want to go on Fox News to try to reach those new voters you wouldn't otherwise reach. And then you have people like Elizabeth Warren who refuse to go on Fox News because she doesn't want to legitimize them. Now, I have come to agree more with Bernie and Tulsi here. I was more sympathetic towards Elizabeth Warren's argument a couple of months ago, but I've come to realize, especially after seeing Bernie Sanders' performance, that it's really important to go on Fox News because regardless, you may not win over every single person who's tuning in, but you need to at least try to reach some of them. But certainly, one thing that I think we all can agree on is that if you want to get a particular message across to Donald Trump, you should absolutely go on Fox News, absolutely without question, because you're not going to reach Donald Trump if you go on MSNBC. Like, if you go on Chris Hayes' show and you say, this is my message to you, Donald Trump, you're wrong, Mr. President. He's never going to get that message. But if you have something very specific that you feel as if he needs to hear, the only possible way you're going to reach him is by going on Fox News. You can tweet at him, but I mean, he probably has like millions of people tweeting at him every single hour. So the best bet is to go on Fox News. Now, Tulsi Gabbard went on Fox News, and I've been incredibly impressed with her lately because she's been speaking out vociferously and passionately against Donald Trump's saber-rattling against Iran because it seems like we're inching closer and closer towards war. We're trying to use overwhelming force to kill their regime economically, possibly catalyze regime change that way. But with that being said, John Bolton is essentially steering the ship which is what it seems as an outsider. And Donald Trump, he may have campaigned as someone who's anti-intervention, but there are warmongers in his administration that are hell-bent on invading Iran. So Tulsi Gabbard did what I think is the smart thing, and she went on Fox News and called out Donald Trump's warmongering. Take a look. I know you have some strong thoughts, uh, meanwhile, on how to proceed with escalating tensions with Iran. Here's the president yes. on that yesterday, and I'll ask you about it after. They're a nation of terror, and we won't put up with it. The deal that was signed by President Obama was a horror show. It's a terrible deal. The minute I collapsed that deal and terminated it, Iran went in a very bad direction. They're now suffering massive problems financially. They have inflation that's about the highest in the world. How should the United States proceed, Congresswoman? Well, let's talk about where we are now. We're unfortunately uh, and very concerningly on the brink of war with Iran. These escalating tensions have brought us here. And like I said, my experience as a soldier having deployed twice to the Middle East, service in Congress on the Foreign Affairs and Armed Services Committees for over six years, I'm very familiar with the region the cost of war and where this path leads us. And the American people need to understand how devastating and costly such a war would be, how it would impact almost every part of our lives. It would undermine our national security. It would strengthen terrorist groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda. It would take a terrible uh, human toll. The cost of, of countless American service members' lives, my brothers and sisters in uniform, the cost uh, to civilians in the region, increasing the refugee crisis across Europe. And it would cost trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars that would come out of our pockets, taxpayers' pockets, to pay for this endless war, resources that we would not be able to use for things like rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. And to, and to build on that and to prevent that as a deterrent, will you give this administration credit for squeezing groups that are offshoots that are supported by the Iranian government? Just a report this morning suggesting Hezbollah and Hamas are reaching out to get more funding and money because they're being strangled. Would you give them that? Well, the decisions that this administration has taken towards Iran have made things worse, not better. They have made our country, the American people, less safe, not more secure. By pulling out of this Iran nuclear deal, that there are some flaws and there are concerns that should have been addressed separately while maintaining and upholding the Iran nuclear deal to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Instead, by the Trump administration pulling out from this deal, they've essentially given Iran an excuse uh, to be able to restart this Iran nuclear weapons program, which is something that they've started talking about, something that makes us and the world far less safe. 
So as president, I would re-enter the Iran nuclear deal. Okay. I would work out the differences separately outside of that and de-escalate the tensions that are unfortunately bringing us to the point where we are at a brink of war with Iran today. I, I... So overall, that was great. I'm glad she went on Fox News and delivered that message because, again, if you want to get Donald Trump a particular message, you do that by going on Fox News. You never, you know, sacrifice your own values or abandon your principles, but you just say what he needs to hear. And that's what she did. So I'm going to get to what she said. But first, I want to address what Donald Trump said in that video, because we didn't talk about this last week when we were talking about his warmongering. But think about how stupid what he said was. Iran is a nation of terror and we won't put up with it. You vetoed a bill that would have ended U.S. support for Saudi Arabia's genocide in Yemen. But yet you're concerned about terror? He has no ideological consistency whatsoever. He has no strategy. Additionally, he talks about how once he withdrew from the Iran deal, their economy collapsed. Well, yeah, that's because you reimposed sanctions. The reason why they joined the Iran deal and agreed to those conditions was so that way you would ease up on the sanctions. So if you're telling me that their economy started to suffer once you reimposed sanctions, my response is no shit. So Donald Trump, he's in over his head here and he has absolutely no idea what he's doing because in one breath, he'll brag about withdrawing from the Iran deal. But in another breath, he talks about trying to facilitate the same type of deal with Kim Jong-un in North Korea. It's, it's maddening. There's no consistency here when it comes to foreign policy. It just depends on his mood. Well, you know, I like Kim Jong-un today, so no war for him. Let's do an Iran deal with him. But, you know, I have a lot of people in my ear trying to convince me that Iran is, you know, this big bad boogeyman. So uh, let's, let's withdraw from the Iran deal there and um, maybe invade. So it's just, it's so stupid. And the more I listen to, to Donald Trump here on foreign policy the more I feel like I'm losing IQ points. So with that being said, getting to what Tulsi said. So she makes the very powerful point that, yes, if we invade Iran, there's going to be a tremendous economic cost. It's going to cost a lot of money. But most importantly, there's going to be a human cost, a human toll. U.S. troops will die. Iranian citizens, women and children, and innocent men will die if we choose to invade for whatever nefarious reason John Bolton has in his head. So that's unacceptable. She also says what Donald Trump's administration has done with regard to withdrawing from the Iran deal and ramping up tensions, escalating, that made us less safe. That is absolutely correct. Because if you withdraw from the Iran deal and you start saber rattling, well, what are they going to try to do? They're going to try to take action to protect themselves. And part of that maybe is actually getting a nuclear weapon as a means of deterring the United States from ever invading. And with another country having a nuclear weapon, of course, that makes us all less safe. So, I mean, what she's saying here is incredibly important. The one thing that I took issue with is she said this about the Iran deal. Quote, there are concerns and there are flaws that should have been addressed, but pulling out was not the, not the right answer. So... I'm glad that she said it was a bad move to pull out from the Iran deal, and overall she says that it was good, but I actually don't really like that she said this, because you kind of legitimize Donald Trump's reasoning for pulling out. So if you say that there were flaws, I do believe it's incumbent on you, Tulsi, to prove what the flaws were. So that's the one issue I took with this, but overall, the broader point and what she conveyed here was super important. She said, war with Iran is bad. It would be a disaster. It would be an unmitigated catastrophe. And to say that on Fox News of all places, where you will most likely reach Donald Trump, that is incredibly important. And the point she made was that it doesn't behoove us to escalate with Iran, and it certainly wouldn't benefit anyone but the military-industrial complex and warmongers like John Bolton and Mike Pompeo if we went to war with Iran. So I give Tulsi a tremendous amount of credit because she's one of two presidential candidates 
who have been speaking out consistently about the military industrial complex. Nobody has said as much about foreign policy as she has, but Bernie Sanders has also been speaking out a lot lately. I expect more from people like Elizabeth Warren. Like, she should be saying a lot more about why war with Iran would be a disaster. But nonetheless, I'll take anyone who's going to speak out and do the right thing and say the right thing, um, and I'll praise them because this is incredibly important. We need all hands on deck. And the reason why I think that I'm so worried about the prospect of war with Iran is because we just we don't have an anti-war movement in America. We see tensions building between the United States and other countries, and people don't take to the streets. There's no real movement. There's no pushback from the media at all. And basically, we've just accepted that whatever the government does, well, so be it. We may not like it, but certainly we're not going to mobilize and coalesce around, you know, stopping them from doing that. But that's bad. Like, we wouldn't need to rely on just two politicians, Tulsi and Bernie, if we took matters into our own hands and took to the streets and protested and built a really large anti-war movement. But it just, it dissipated. Whatever happened to the Vietnam War era and the protests? Whatever happened to the protests, you know, against the Iraq War? I think part of the problem is that we're all just... We're so drained when we come home from work because we work so much. We don't have time. We don't have the resources necessary to take time off of work to protest. So it's difficult. But if we really want to stop the military industrial complex from basically doing what they want, no matter who's president, we've got to have a real anti-war movement. And I don't know how to get that started, but I know that there are two leaders, Bernie and Tulsi, who could potentially be the leaders of a new anti-war movement. So if anything... Whenever they speak out, I feel inclined to praise them because this is incredibly important, especially now. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher. <laughs>